Danny Shaw is a professor of Latin American studies and joins us out of New York. Professor Shaw, welcome. Who is at fault here for a shortage of food or uh, electricity, for example, in uh, the in Cuba that has triggered demonstrations? Is it the government or the 60-year embargo by the United States? Good morning to Tehran and the peace-loving people of the world. Um, 61 years of economic warfare, of uh, diplomatic warfare, is at fault. That is the context for uh, tons of hardship that the 11 million people of Cuba endure uh, daily. Who is Joe Biden in the U.S. government with so many human rights violations right here uh, across the United States? Police brutality an opioid heroin epidemic of unprecedented proportions, um, mental health crises that intensify every day. Who are they to impose more sanctions and more economic warfare on the beleaguered people of Cuba who've been resisting empire? And that's really their crime. Um, these sanctions, this latest round, has nothing to do with human rights and everything to do with uh, U.S. fear of Cuba as a shining example for the entire global south of self-determination. Nevertheless, some in Cuba have uh, directed their anger at the uh, over the economic situation at the Cuban government. Um, when a country is under such a tight blockade by the United States, as you have noted, uh, that a blockade that has been denounced, I believe, twenty nine consecutive times uh, by UN resolutions. Um, what, what can the Cuban government do? Uh, the path forward for the Cuban people passes through Lima, Peru. It passes through Caracas, Venezuela. It passes through Beijing and Moscow and Tehran. Uh, as the world opens up, as the world becomes more multipolar, this opens up big diplomatic, economic, and political possibilities for the Cuban people who've lived under the boot of this blockade for so long. So with this official victory of Pedro Castillo in Lima, Peru, and across Peru, um, with the recent victory in, in Bolivia, as uh, the Americas have more and more economic and political sovereignty, uh, this will be incredibly good news for the Cuban people. This South-to-South -South cooperation that Venezuela has spearheaded since the 1998 victory of Hugo Chavez, this is the path forward uh, for the global south, for all exploited nations and all blockaded nations, uh, right. not a unipolar world, but a multipolar world. Finally, Professor, what do you make of the, uh, of the Colombian government and top U.S. Uh, ally in the region for criticizing or voicing support for the uh, protests in Cuba that took place on July 11 and July 12. That's two days. Meanwhile, since November 2019, the Cuba, uh, the Colombian rather, government has been widely denounced and condemned by human rights uh, groups for their widespread crackdown on demonstrations in their own country. That's a great point. Uh, why doesn't uh, the U.S. sanction Colombia? Uh, well, you can't invade the invaded. Uh, Colombia is already invaded and occupied by thousands of U.S. troops, nine U.S. military bases, 11 U.S. military bases in, in Panama, uh, increasing military encroachment in the Ecuador of Guillermo Lasso and neoliberalism. So we see this double standard applied. Uh, any country that's already in the sphere, the economic and military sphere of imperialism, never receives these harsh sanctions. Their human rights records are not under a microscope, but any country that has any degree of sovereignty, like Cuba, like Iran, like Russia, like Zimbabwe, these are the countries that continue to be subjected to the true human rights violations, because that's what these blockades are. They're airtight blockades of people's socioeconomic rights in the blockaded nations. Okay, Mr. Shaw, thank you very much indeed. Professor Danny Shaw is a professor of Latin American studies joining us out of New York.